If you're trying to improve your digestion, one of the most important things I learned when I got into gut health was understanding how my digestion worked from top to bottom. I'm Gabrielle, I've been a dietitian for four years and I specifically work with gut health patients or patients with gastrointestinal disorders. What does that mean? Gastro means stomach, intestinal means intestines. But what is your gut? Is it your stomach, your small intestine, your large intestine? Did you ever think about your esophagus or your pancreas or your gallbladder and how that is involved in digestion? Because it's so interesting and it all matters. The point of this video is to explain to you what gut health means and if you're trying to not be bloated, uncomfortable, not have acid reflux, you want to understand digestion from top to bottom. You want to understand those systems in order to understand where your digestive issues are coming from. The first thing we really want to ask ourselves is we say gut health, what the hell's a gut? When I think of the gut, I'm thinking of the intestines. But if we're thinking about gut health, it involves your digestive tract, your mouth your esophagus, your stomach, probably your gallbladder and your pancreas because they're involved in digestion, your intestines, your small intestine, and your large intestine. If you're looking at your stomach, your small intestine is wrapped up right in here. Your large intestine is all the way around it. So when you're having pains in different areas, that can mean different things. A microbiome is just a collection of microorganisms that live on or within your body. I'm sure we have more than we even know, but we have our oral microbiome. If your mouth's dirty, you might have a lot of issues with stuff down here. Why? Because everything starts up here. But when people say the gut microbiome, they're usually talking about the microbes in your colon. If you are trying to understand digestion, you really just need to understand all of it. And it really helps me and it's how I think about things when I'm working with a patient. So when they say gut health, they just mean all of it. And then when we say the gut microbiome, they mean the colon. Does that make sense? Cause like, I don't really think people know. Some people just say gut health and I think they're just talking about everything down here. You're bloated, gut. But I don't think they realize it's like a stomach, pancreas, small intestine, large intestine. Regardless, here it is, the top down process. This matters because if you're not chewing your food enough and you're bloated, you're already screwing things up. Digestion starts in your mouth kind of starts in your brain actually. The thought of food, think about like a juicy steak. Maybe you don't like steak, maybe you're a vegetarian. Think about a can of beans, <laughs> think about ice cream or your favorite food ever, an orange, watermelon. Okay, um, I'm producing saliva. Are you? <laughs> I'm serious. Is there saliva in your mouth right now? If not, close your eyes and think about your favorite food. Picture like your last meal that you would ever want. Okay. Saliva is being produced because you thought about food. If you're preparing for a meal, you're cooking. The smell, the smell of the food is going to increase saliva production. You're preparing your body for digestion. You increase saliva production in your mouth. Saliva has digestive enzymes in it, specifically salivary amylase, which is partly what can help break down carbohydrates. When you see a digestive enzyme and you see amylase, that's what it's for. You put food in your mouth, it mixes with the saliva, you chew it. How much are you chewing? Okay, you didn't chew enough. Your body has to do more now. Thanks. Your stomach's like, ugh, fine. Your intestines are like, ugh. Your pancreas is like, oh my God, we need that many more digestive enzymes. Fine. Bile's like, <laughs> sorry. Your body has to do more. You chew your food down to like smoothie consistency. Your body's like, you're great, but no one wants to do that. So happy medium in between. Chew your food enough so your body can do what it's supposed to do, but it doesn't need to overwork. It wants to work smarter, not harder. You know what I mean? So as you can see, we have mechanical digestion and chemical digestion. Mechanical, your mouth's a machine. You're doing it yourself, you have teeth, amazing. Chemical, you're releasing salivary amylase. The chewed food is now called a bolus. So you chew your food, you create the bolus, it goes down to your esophagus, and then there's something called the lower esophageal sphincter that separates the esophagus and the stomach. It just opens, okay? It opens, it lets the bolus into the stomach. Remember that if you have acid reflux. Okay, food enters your stomach. You have different cells in your stomach, like your parietal cells that release hydrochloric acid, which is stomach acid and you have chief cells that release pepsinogen, which is what helps you start breaking down your protein. So food enters your stomach, your food continues to mix with the stomach acid, and then it creates something called chyme. The chyme enters your small intestine, which has three parts. It first enters the duodenum or duodenum, where your pancreas is going to release digestive enzymes to further break down your food, more amylase to help you break down your carbs, lipase to help you break down your fats, and protease to help you finish breaking down your protein. And your gallbladder is going to release bile, which can help emulsify your fat so the lipase can actually break it down. If your gallbladder is removed, you still have bile. It's just not going out like a water hose. It's just kind of like, slowly. 
getting released into your small intestine. You probably benefit from an ox bile type of supplement or lactase, but another time. So your small intestine breaks carbs down completely and it gets absorbed into your bloodstream as glucose. Your proteins get absorbed into your bloodstream as amino acids that go to your muscles to help repair and build them. They can go to your gut to help protect and repair your gut. So many cool things. And here's a fun chart. This is your small intestine. It's made up of your duodenum, duodenum, your jejunum, and your ileum. And each of the sections of your small intestine absorb different nutrients, which is really cool. So what's left in your small intestine at the end of all that is basically fiber and water. Fiber comes from the carbohydrate. So if you think about a carbohydrate, carbohydrates are made up of starches, fibers, and sugars. That's why you see them on the label. The fiber part just kind of does its own thing. And the rest breaks down and goes into the bloodstream. Water and fiber go to your colon or your large intestine. And that's where the fiber gets to do its job. Insoluble fiber goes right through you. You poop it out immediately. Soluble fiber can stay there for a little bit, create a little gel, help you have a nice form stool. And then the prebiotic soluble fiber is gonna be food for the good gut bugs in your colon. They're gonna multiply, they're gonna get rid of the shit we don't want, and then you're gonna poop it out. Cool. So if you have an issue in your esophagus, for instance, that can really screw things up. If you have acid reflux, your lower esophageal sphincter, that little thing I mentioned between your esophagus and your stomach, just stays open. So when you eat and your stomach gets filled with stomach acid to break down your protein, this thing's open. So your stomach acid's like, I don't know where to go. It goes up. And then everything's screwed up. It's really interesting, isn't it? If you have SIBO, you're supposed to have the bacteria in your large intestine. It goes to your small intestine. Okay, so if you made it this far, congrats. You've graduated. Because some people really just don't care. They just want me to give them a supplement. So, tough shit. <laughs> I'm only saying that because I obviously know they didn't get here. But I'm glad you are here and you wanted to learn about it because I'm such a loser and I really, really love this stuff. I just geek out over it and I want everyone else to. And I just can't tell you what to do because I want you to learn. And if that's not your style, then I don't know what to tell you because I need to understand how everything works if I want to make things better. And like, what if I did just tell you what to eat and what to take? You think you're gonna live the rest of your life like that? I, no you're not. It's not really gonna last and it's not really gonna be very helpful for you. So yeah, just looking out and that's just module one. Module two is all about the vagus nerve. So we'll really start to understand like gut brain access and how that whole digestion process can really be impacted by your brain. Share and send and yay. I'm happy you're here and I'll talk to you later. Bye.